Hello everyone, I'm Michael Bird and I'm going to give a verbal uh, reading of my article, which is a response to Wayne Grudem's article, Trump's Legacy is at Stake, where he basically in his own terms wants to wean Republican voters off Donald Trump. Uh, now, a few weeks ago, I was in Texas. I was in Texas when I read uh, Grudem's article, and I had a wonderful chance to drive from San Antonio down to Waco uh, with Dave Wilhite of Truett Seminary. And on the way there, I saw lots of lots of cows, lots of American flags, and uh, lots of bumper stickers and lots of signs saying how much they love and support Trump. And, you know, I was, I was having a good time down in Waco, hanging around Baylor University, doing some things down there. And while I was, you know, on my phone, taking a nice little stroll along the Brazos River, I came across this article by Wayne Grudem, uh, basically trying to get you know, religious Republicans to dump Trump without renouncing him. Uh, but let me give let me give a bit of a, a backstory here. OK. Um, Several years ago, uh, when Trump was running, uh, he argued in an article that voting for Trump was a morally good choice. Uh, then, two days after the revelation of the now infamous Access Hollywood tape that exposed Trump boasting about sexual assault, uh, Grudem retracted his endorsement of Trump and he called for Trump to withdraw. But a mere 10 days later, by which time it was clear that Trump was not going to uh, withdraw from the race, uh, Grudem retracted his retraction. And since then, Grudem has been a fairly big pro-Trump supporter and apologist. And I should add, he's no uh, mere political you know, pundit. He's actually a fairly well-known evangelical theologian. In fact, through his um, uh, systematic theology, he's a very, very influential figure amongst white conservative evangelical Christians. And I've long wondered uh, how Grudem would respond to the 2020 election, to the, you know, January 6th riot and whether he'd call out the anti-democratic actions and the attempted coup. I always wondered what would what would Grudem uh, make of this? What, and what's his opinion on all of these things? Uh, well, um, in this article, Grudem, um, argues a number of things, and they kind of give us a good insight into his thinking about Trump and January the 6th and what that means for uh, Christians and how they should vote and their relationship with the Republican Party. Basically, Grudem argues several things. First of all, he says Trump has a good legacy of political achievements, but you know, Trump is just unelectable as president now. That seems to be the, the gist. Second, he says, look, Yes, the Democrats did interfere in the election, probably not enough to really make a difference, but good lawyers were unable to prove any serious meddling and claiming the election was stolen turns off independent voters. Third, he says Trump habitually endorses weak candidates in the party who tarnish the Republican brand. Uh, fifth, uh, he says Trump is plagued by repeated legal accusations, most of which are, he says, pernicious misuse of the courts as weapons against political opponents, yet these will be a factor against Trump winning. Uh, six, he says Trump's age and character are ongoing concerns as well. Seventh, he says if Trump is the Republican nominee, the election will be about him rather than about policies. I think, I think that's always going to happen no matter where Trump goes. It's always going to be about him because Trump will make it about him. Uh, eighth, Trump should receive a presidential pardon from the next Republican president. OK, so that's that's his main point he's arguing in the article. Uh, now, on a sympathetic reading of, 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 of Grudem's article, uh, I'd say that he's trying to genuinely speak into the deep red and religious Republican constituency and urge them to move on from Trump without causing a rupture in the Republican Party over Trump. He argues that Trump was a good president and he's even something of a political martyr, but currently he's unelectable. So they need a new presidential candidate for the Republican Party. And that means the reasons for rejecting Trump are about electoral expediency 
rather than Trump's moral deficiency or even for a, uh, a defense or for the sake of democracy. That's, that seems to be the reasoning behind uh, Grudem's thought. He wants to wean his people off Trump, uh, but he knows he's got to do it carefully. He can't go in guns blazing. That, that's my sympathetic reading of Grudem's article. Now, there's, I think there's a couple of things I actually would here agree on, and, and people may not like this, but I actually would say that I think Trump's legacy is actually a lot better than people may care to realize. Uh, I remember very early in his presidency, uh, Trump gave a very good speech in Poland uh, about liberty, about freedom. You know, the US economy was better under Trump than it was under either Obama or Biden. Uh, Trump didn't start any new wars, uh, but he did help in, in the defeat of ISIS. Uh, his, his administration even led um, efforts to uh, decriminalize homosexuality in Africa and the Middle East. So, you know, Trump the progressive. Uh, he took a hard line on China, which I definitely uh, agree with. Uh, his administration also helped craft peace agreements in the Balkans and between Israel and its neighbors. And under Trump, there was no disastrous withdrawal from Kabul. Uh, you know, there was rampant xenophobia and an attempted coup, but, you know, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. Um, so we can give credit where credit is due. Uh, now, some people will be morally appalled by me saying anything good about Donald Trump, but I just want you to remember something. I remember when people were saying that George W. Bush was the worst, most evil president in the history of the American Republic. I mean, do you remember that? I remember that. I remember that. Uh, but I would say in hindsight, uh, President Bush was president at a very difficult time, you know, after 9-11. Uh, he took some bad advice from some badder people about Iraq, about hurricanes and about, uh, you know, housing loans. But he, 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 was a, a decent, he was a decent man and in some senses even a decent president. And you have to remember that any critique of Trump will be more penetrating if it's more even-handed and fair. So I, I think we have to be prepared to say good things about what the Trump administration achieved. That doesn't wipe the slate on all the terrible things, the, the divisiveness, the you know, xenophobia and, and you know, the Christian nationalism, but we have to give credit where credit is due. The second thing I'll say in um, Grudem's defense is I think the idea of a pardon of President Trump is a good idea. That's not because it will teach the Justice Department a lesson for using lawfare against uh, politicians. I think a Trump pardon is a good idea for the very same reason that President Ford's uh, pardon of President Nixon was a good idea. Rather than a protracted legal case that divides the nation, sucks oxygen away from the big national issues that need to be addressed, a pardon admits wrongdoing, it admits the need for clemency, it draws a line under it and says, now we can move on. So I think that's, a, that's why a pardon of Trump, I think does make sense. Now, obviously it's the disagreements I have with Grudem are the main thing we wanna note here. And I'll simply say this, Grudem failed to address the elephant in the room. Trump conspired to overturn the election which is evidenced by his phone call to the Secretary of State in Georgia, and he tried to coerce his own VP, Mike Pence, against certifying the election result. Trump engaged in a conspiracy to subvert the election, as even as some of his former attorneys have admitted. And it's, uh, it's no mistake, it's no coincidence that Pence and Trump's phone call to Georgia are not mentioned in Grudem's article. You know, at the, at the end of the day, Grudem's article is about uh, expediency and the path to white evangelical Christian power. Rather than doing what is right before God and man, it's, it's all about what is the path to power and the White House. Grudem wants to dump Trump as the Republican nominee, not because of his crimes, not because of his attack on America's democracy, but because Trump is no longer a viable gateway to political power. So it's about power, not principles. Uh, I wish Grudem had written an article that was titled, uh, Russell Moore and Liz Cheney were right. We need to repent of our idolatrous worship of the orange Jesus. You know, I would prefer that. Uh, but instead we, we kind of got an apology for Trump. You know, 
Uh, one that even Grudem seems to be uh, tired of making. I mean, Grudem writes, having to de defend Trump again and again for another year produces in me a great feeling of weariness. Uh, for my mind, Grudem should be feeling not weariness, but an acute sense of betrayal uh, by Trump and maybe a little bit of self-loathing um, for defending what was indefensible, immoral, undemocratic and unchristian because of a belief that his party must be in power, okay? Uh, that That's the real problem, the belief that his party must be in change now, uh, in, in uh, the White House. Now, um, again, let's, let's appreciate what Grudem is trying to do in this article. I think he wants to turn people off Trump on terms that they can accept. You know, I, I, I get that, call that real politic. You know, uh, just simply being pragmatic. However, it is the terms he proposes. We must win no matter what. That is the problem. Trump is merely the symptom. Grudem is, accepts that Trump's inaction in stopping the January 6th riot was a dereliction of presidential duty, though he, he fails to mention that Trump actually incited the riot, uh, even if he did not direct it. So Grudem knows that Trump is a bad hombre, okay? He knows that for certain. But I have to ask, has Grudem reached the point of saying, we must never support Trump as a presidential candidate, no matter what? Has Grudem reached that point? No, he hasn't. In fact, Grudem says in the article that he will support the Republican Party no matter what. Uh, he says, I speak personally as a lifelong Republican, one who will support any Republican candidate because the policies supported by the Republicans are more consistent with the overall teachings of the Bible regarding governments and laws than policies of the Democrats, in my opinion. What that means is that if Trump does again become the Republican nominee, Grudem will again get behind him. He will again retract his call to abandon Trump and will again tell his American Christian friends that they must get behind Trump, knowing full well, even more so than last time, where it might lead. Why will Grudem do that? Because of his commitment to the Republican Party, but also because it's about the path to white evangelical power. And he will mount the horse he is given to ride there, even if it's Trump. Now, I, uh, I recently reread parts of Grudem's book, um, Politics According to the Bible. Uh, I disagree with a lot of stuff in this book, but you know, to his credit, Grudem gives a very good uh, biblical and Baptist defense of democracy. Uh, the Baptist tradition is you know, very rich and, 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 and very positive in, in this respect. Uh, the question I have is whether Grudem still believes uh, in democracy, because democracy only works if the loser concedes, uh, if there's a peaceful, a peaceful transition of power, if we conduct our debates by means of persuasion rather than by angry mobs. And this, I think, is the, the, uh, the dilemma. You can either accept Grudem's case for democracy, or you can accept Grudem's terms for keeping white evangelical civil religion hegemonic. But you can't do both. You can't say, I believe in the Christian democratic tradition and say, I'm voting for the Republicans no matter what, because they are the path to white evangelical power. You can't do both. What I think uh, American evangelical supporters of democracy need to do now is to argue against Grudem's terms. Argue with passion, ardor, conviction. They need to argue that the Republican Party is not anointed by Jesus. That ends do not justify the means. Keeping your tribe in political power is not worth soiling your soul over. That presidents come and go and presidents are a poor substitute for Jesus. That losing with principles is better than winning by deviancy. And liberal democracy is better than a Christian theocracy. Uh, that's the video summary of my article. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, 
this is a this is a hot topic and as America approaches 2024 and as your friend across the pond who's spent a lot of time in America reading a lot of books about Christian nationalism and political theology theology around the world uh, that's why on the one hand I was happy to see Grudem engaging in a critique of Donald Trump and not supporting another Trump presidency the problem is the terms on what he wants to do at the reason it's not because he's interested in defending democracy because trump is no longer the path to white evangelical power and there my friends is the problem <laughs>